Welcome back to another Reaper tutorial. I'm going to be doing a multi-part series on looping here and looping can be kind of messy and difficult to understand at first when you're using Reaper. So I've created some custom actions that will help get you recording quicker and spending less time setting it all up. So I'll show you how to use the custom actions first and then I'll break down what they're doing. Now you're going to need to know a few things uh, throughout the series on looping. So if you don't know, I've posted some links below to help you out. So first, you'll need to, to download the SWS extensions from the link in the description. So these are a free and trusted collection of actions that expand on Reaper's functionality. Second, you'll need to know how to load Rescript. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you'll probably want to check out my video on loading scripts, also in the description. Third, you'll need to know how to import key maps. And I'll point you to another video in the description that shows you how this works. And the last thing you'll need are my custom track templates, which you can download from the description and then drag and drop into your Reaper track templates folder. Uh, if you don't know where that's located, I've included some help below as well. So now that that's out of the way, let's use these custom actions. So let's say you want to add a new virtual instrument to start doing some MIDI looping. I usually like to have my MIDI loop set up to auto quantize. So you'll be familiar with this if you're coming from Ableton. Uh, so we'll right click and add my custom track template. This might look different for you. These are my folders, but we'll add the custom track template quantized virtual instrument with two bar loop. And what that does is adds a track with all of the appropriate settings to do this really quickly. And then it adds an empty item with play all takes selected in the item settings. And I'm not going to dig into what's going on there other than to know that the shortcuts will do this for you. Uh, but it's something that's not activated by default, uh, the play all takes thing, and it's necessary for the type of looping we're going to do. Uh, next, we want to make sure that record mode is set to time selection auto punch. It's usually set to normal by default, so you may have to turn that on. And you'll need to set your time selection equal to the length of the empty item. Quick way to do this is to hold down shift and double click on the item and you'll see that it automatically makes the time selection as long as that empty item. So, okay, now we're ready to pick a virtual instrument. So I'm going to go in here. Uh, I'm going to use BPM. So I just set up BPM really quickly and now you should be able to play your MIDI keyboard and hear the instruments right away. So now you're ready to record and all you have to do is come over here and hit the record button, which looks different now that we have auto punch time selection selected. Uh, so you can hit the record button and you're ready to go. So that's it for this video. Next time we'll talk about how to undo while you're recording. Uh, similar to Ableton Live. It's tricky to do in Reaper, but there is a way. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.